HarperCollins and Harper Audio present Finding Chica, A Little Girl, An Earthquake, and the Making of a Family by Mitch Albom. This is the author. Hi, this is Mitch Album. I'm the author of the book Finding Chica, and I want to thank you for listening to it. Because this is such a personal story for me, I wanted to include some extra features in the audiobook, and what's more fitting for an audiobook than sound, especially the sound of Chica's amazing little voice. Throughout this reading, you'll hear clips from moments Chica and I and my wife had together, clips that are not in the actual printed book, but which will give you a better idea of who she was and the unique boldness of her personality. It's my hope that she comes even more alive through her own voice as I tell you our story through mine. So let's get started. To the kids at the Have Faith Haiti Mission Orphanage who show us every day the incredible resilience of children. When I was one, I had just begun. When I was two, I was nearly new. When I was three, I was hardly me. When I was four, I was not much more. When I was five, I was just alive. But now I am six. I'm as clever as clever. So I think I'll be six now, forever and ever. A. A. Milne We're playing There It Is. Where is the water? Where is the water? Where is the bottle of water? There it is. All right, where is the book of Pokemon? Where is the... There is... There what? There it is. There it is. Where <laughs> is the crayon? There it is. There what? There is... She no, is. there she, what? She is. No, there it is. There is... is. No, there it... There it... Is. Is. Yes. Chapter 1 Us Why aren't you writing, Mr. Mitch? Chica is lying on the carpet in my office. She flips onto her back. She plays with her fingers. She comes here in the early morning, when the light is still thin at the window. Sometimes she has a doll or a set of magic markers. Other times it's just her. She wears her blue pajamas with the My Little Pony cartoon on the top and pastel stars on the bottoms. In the past, Chica loved to choose her clothes each morning, after brushing her teeth, matching the colors of the socks and the shirts. But she doesn't do that anymore. Chica died last spring, when the trees in our yard were beginning to bud, as they are budding now, as it is spring again. Her absence left us without breath or sleep or appetite, and my wife and I stared straight ahead for long stretches until someone spoke to snap us out of it. Then one morning, Chica reappeared. Why aren't you writing, she says again. My arms are crossed. I stare at the empty screen. About what? About me. I will. When? Soon. She makes a grr sound like a cartoon tiger. Don't be mad. <laughs> Don't be mad, Chica. <laughs> Don't go, okay? She taps her little fingers on the desk as if she has to think about it. Chica never stays for long. She first appeared eight months after she died, the morning of my father's funeral. I walked outside to look at the sky, and suddenly there she was, standing beside me, holding the porch railing. I said her name in disbelief. Chica? And she turned so I knew she could hear me. I spoke quickly, believing this was a dream and she would vanish at any moment. That was then. Lately, when she appears, I am calm. I say, Good morning, beautiful girl. And she says, Good morning, Mr. Mitch. And she sits on the floor or in her little chair, which I never remove from my office. <laughs> 